Mexicans possess a unique look and, as a result, are often categorized into different groups. Many Mexicans themselves will say that they are brown. Some identify as white when filling out surveys. Some see themselves as purely Native American, while some even believe that they are a lost tribe of Hebrew Israelites. But which one is true? In order to properly categorize Mexicans, we first have to break down their genetic composition to its core. Because the vast majority of Mexico are mestizos, we will be breaking down their origins and what category they fall into. But please note Mexicans of almost entirely European or native ancestry also exist. Let's first look into the most major component of Mexican mestizos, the native Amerindian one. As known throughout history, civilizations such as Aztecs, Mayans, and Olmecs dominated the land that is today called Mexico. They were far from the only Amerindian groups in the region. Just like all the other Amerindian groups, they had a similar genetic profile. Their genetic story began in the steppes and tundras of Asia. More precisely, Siberia. Here, between 20 and 25,000 years ago, a branch of Northeast Asians from around the area of Amur River split off and went north into Siberia, where they merged with ancient North Eurasians, whom we will refer to as A-N-E from now on. A-N-E themselves were predominantly West Eurasian, but with a notable Basal East Eurasian contribution, which happened paternally as A-N-E paternal haplogroups are of Basal East Eurasian origin. This admixture created ancient Paleo-Siberians, who shall from now on be referred to as APS. Northeast Asians from Amur contributed about 70% of ancestry to APS, with ancient North Eurasians contributing around 30% overall. However, paternally, ANE contributed more as Y-DNA lineage Q sourced from A-N-E is much more prevalent in Amerindians than the paternal lineage C2, which was sourced from Northeast Asians. An ironic moment here is that A-N-E paternal ancestry is predominant in both the Native Americans and Europeans that eventually colonized them. APS then massively settled the Americas entering from Alaska and then migrating further down south. Although they are the major ancestors of all modern Native American groups, please note that there is evidence that they may not have been the first to enter America. There is currently evidence that an earlier group from Siberia that had Denisovan admixture and a more southern East Eurasian genetic profile entered Americas along the coastlines and moved south to South America through these coastlines. However, this group was limited and was then overwhelmed by incoming ancient Paleo-Siberians. So now that you know how Amerindians ended up in Mexico, what is their contribution to the Mexican genome? Well, it is the largest component of Mexican ancestry. According to a recent study from 2020, Amerindian ancestry within Mexican mestizos peaks in the southeastern part of Mexico at 81.5% and is lowest in the northern regions of Mexico, where it is 37.8% of the mestizo genome. The average for mestizos from all of Mexico is estimated to be around 60%. Amerindian groups that identify as such, and not as mestizo in southern Mexico, likely carry upwards of 90% of Amerindian ancestry. The second largest component of Mexican ancestry is the one that provided modern Mexicans with their language and religion, and it is of course of European origin, specifically Iberian. Europeans as a whole came about from an admixture of early European farmers, who were mainly of Anatolian origin with minor Western hunter-gatherer admixture, and from Yamnaya nomads from the East, who brought the Indo-European languages into Europe. The Yamnaya nomads were roughly half of Eastern European hunter-gatherer origin, who themselves were of 80% ancient North Eurasian origin. Yes, the same A.N.E. who contributed to APS and Amerindians. They were also the main source of paternal ancestry to Europeans, as most of Europeans today carry their Y-DNA rather than that of European farmers or Western hunter-gatherers, though Western hunter-gatherer paternal lineages did notably survive on edges of Europe. As a result, almost all modern Mexican paternal lineages ultimately go back to ancient North Eurasians, whether they are subclades of Q from Amerindians or subclades of R1B from Europeans. 
the Iberian genetic profile autosomally was marked by being predominantly of European farmer origin at 65%, followed by a 30% contribution from Yamnaya nomads, and finally by 5% of Bronze Age North African contribution. The North African admixture here is already embedded into Iberian genome and doesn't include additional North African admixture that would stem from Conversos or Canarian Spaniards who also arrived in Mexico. This European contribution follows an inverse logic to Amerindian ancestry as it peaks in northern Mexico at 62.6%, but decreases the further south you go being lowest in mestizos of southeast Mexico at only 11.8%. When taking the average of entire Mexico into account, it makes up about 37% of Mexican mestizo genome. The third component that is not necessarily present in all of Mexican mestizos, but is high enough to appear in the averages for the entire nation, is that of sub-Saharan Africans. Unlike Spanish Caribbean colonies, and English colonies in USA, Mexico wasn't much of a slave-based society with a plantation economy. Rather, most of the labor was sourced from the local Amerindians. However, British and Portuguese still brought some slaves to Mexico, mainly from the Senegambia region. By the 17th century, majority of Africans in Mexico were already free men, and by 1829, slavery was completely abolished in Mexico. Some of Afro-Mexicans also descended from slaves from British colonies and later American states to the north, who would escape to Mexico, and also from free men that would simply migrate. Today in modern Mexicans, this ancestry is on average between 3 and 4 percent. However, as mentioned earlier, it is possible for many Mexicans not to have any of this admixture, while some Mexicans, especially from states like Veracruz and Guerrero, may be predominantly of African origin. Okay, now we know Mexicans' genetic makeup, but you still haven't answered what race are they. Okay, this is simple. Mexicans on average are 60% native, 37% European, and 3% sub-Saharan African. Because Amerindians are mostly East Eurasian, but carry about 15% of West Eurasian admixture from their ANE ancestry. That means the 60% of native ancestry would translate into 51% East Eurasian and 9% West Eurasian, which would make Mexicans 51% East Eurasian, 46% West Eurasian, and 3% Sub-Saharan African. So the U.S. Census would be wrong in classifying them simply as white because neither European nor West Eurasian in general is their largest genetic component, as they are 51% East Eurasian. They're not purely Amerindian either, as they do have almost half of European and minor African admixture. The brown classification is also tricky because it often includes people such as Asian Indians and Middle Easterners who have a completely different genetic profile from Mexican mestizos and the only similarities can be from skin tones due to living in hotter climates. The lost tribe of Hebrew Israelites theory is completely unfounded genetically, historically, and in every shape, way, or form imaginable, as neither their paternal lineages maternal lineages or autosomal DNA has any similarity whatsoever to ancient samples of Israelites. The category that would suit Mexican mestizos the most is Weijian, with a slight African admixture. If we run Mexican mestizos' genetic distance to other people of the world, we see that other Latino mestizos and Native Americans who are mixed with white Americans from the USA are the closest. However, if we run their genetic distance to the people of the world, excluding the Americas, then Turkic people such as Crimean Tatars, Nogais, Bashkirs, and Uzbeks often come up as closest populations due to them also being a roughly even split of West and East Eurasian genetic clusters. And as you can see on the screen, these people do remotely resemble Mexicans visually. Please note that this only means that Central's Asians are closest to mestizos out of everyone else in the old world, but that doesn't mean that they're close, just closest. In general, their genetic distances are still extremely distant due to both populations having different sources for their West and East Eurasian ancestries. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, a comment, and subscribe.